Welcome to another video. In this video, we're going to be depressing a cubic polynomial and solving this equation. Will I be solving it? Maybe. But I want you to know that a depressed polynomial is not new to you because every time you do completing the squares, what you're actually doing to the quadratic is you're depressing the quadratic. Okay. Now, once you have that understanding, this is not going to be strange. It's just that what we do here looks a little different from what we do normally when we do completing the squares. I'm going to show you how we depress a quadratic, and we call it completing the squares, and that's exactly what we're going to do here. But we're not completing the cube because the cube cannot be completed. It's just not possible. Let's get into the video. Before I show you how to depress a cubic, let me show you how to depress a quadratic. We call it completing the squares. So there are two ways to do it. The traditional way we do it and the way I'm going to use for this one. Because once you get it here, this becomes very easy for you to follow. So what I'm going to do is let's split this board in two. Boom. Split in two. Now, look at this. Normally, if you want to do completing the squares here, you're going to say x squared plus 2x equals minus 1. And then you're going to take half of this. It's going to be half of the, co the coefficient of the next term, which is uh, 2 here. What's half of it? It's 1. So you're going to say x squared plus 2x. Half of 2 is 1. 1 squared is 1 equals minus 1. You're going to, since you added 1 here, you have to add 1 here. So, actually what I chose is a perfect square. Maybe I should not have chosen. Let, let's choose, let's choose seven. Okay, so it makes, let's choose three. Does three work? Okay, three works. So I'm going to change this to three. Okay, so now adding one to this means minus three plus, ah, uh, okay, I'm going to be getting, it, it doesn't matter. So this is minus three plus one. So this now is a perfect square. This is x plus one squared is equal to minus 2, so that x plus 1 will be equal to the square root of minus 2, plus or minus, and then if I move this one here, x equals minus 1, plus or minus square root of minus 2. So we have two answers. x will be equal to minus 1, plus the square root of minus 2 is imaginary square root of 2, which is going to be imaginary square root of 2, or and the other one, this x1, x2, is going to be minus 1 minus imaginary square root of 2. So these are the two results we're going to get. Now, this is the traditional way of completing the squares. But what we really do is we depress the quadratic. How do we do it? This is what we do. We say, let t be equal to, because it is a second degree polynomial, we say let it be x plus 1 half. You see, this 1, oh, it's not 1 half. It is 2 over 2. x plus b over 2, actually. That's what we do. In fact, it is x plus b over 2a because if this was ax plus bx plus c, so this is our a, but in this case, a equals 1, so it doesn't show here, okay? a equals 1 in this case, a equals 1, and b equals, um, in this case, 2. So what we really have is t is equal to x plus 2 over 2 times 1, which is the same thing as x plus 1. So this is the substitution that is made for a quadratic. For a cubic, this is the substitution that is made. We say let x, sorry, let t be equal to x plus, this is our b, it's going to be b over 3a. You see the difference? We're using 3 here because this is a cubic. It is from Pascal's triangle. That's how we know we need 3. 
Pascal's triangle tells you that the middle term after the first one, it's one, two, one, one, three, three, one. That's how you know which one for the fourth degree polynomial, it's going to be four. And you just keep going like that. Okay, let's clean this up. Now, you see, I'm talking about this. This is what I plan to do. But if you can do this, it's exactly what you do here. You just use this substitution. In this case, this is our A, this is B, this is C, and this is D. So let's finish this. You see that this is the same thing we're going to get. So here, we're going to... Now, this means that X will be equal to T minus 1 if you subtract 1 from both sides. So if we go to this polynomial, let's get rid of this. And then we put T minus 1 for X squared. We're going to have T minus 1 squared plus 2 times T minus 1. Um, what else is there? Plus 3 equals 0. When you square this, you're going to get t squared minus 2t plus 1 plus 2t minus 2 plus 3 equals 0. This takes this out. What you have left is t squared. Do you notice there is no more t? Yes, that's the depressed quadratic. So what you have left is just 1 minus 2 plus 3. What's that? That's 4 minus 2. That's going to be what? It's 2. So it's going to be t squared plus 2 equals 0. So that t squared equals minus 2 and t equals plus or minus square root, which is equal to um, plus or minus imaginary square root of 2. But we're looking for x. What did we say x is? x equals t minus 1. So it's going to be this minus 1, which is going to be um, minus 1 plus imaginary square root of 2 minus 1 minus imaginary square root of 2. Are those the two answers we got here? That's it. So you see it is the depressed cubic that we call the completed square or completing the squares, whatever, however you want to say. So for this one, we know that our b is 1 and a is 1, so our substitution implies that t equals x plus 1 over 3, which means x will be equal to t minus 1 over 3. So that's the substitution we're going to be making if we move 1 over 3 here. So I'm going to go here and plug in t minus 1 over 3. Now there is a general formula which I have never memorized because it's too much for me. That's too much. Okay, just too much. I'm going to keep building on this and then we'll talk about the discriminant of a cubic equation so you know when it has uh, multiple real roots or just equal roots or whatever conditions. But unless you're really working on cubic um, equations, yeah, it's a lot of work and a lot of things to memorize. So let's plug this in here. We're going to have t minus one third cubed plus t minus one third squared plus t minus one third plus one is equal to zero. So now I'm going to use binomial expansion for this. The very first term is going to be t cubed. The next term is going to be, um, I'm going to have t squared, but this is going to be one, so it's going to be minus, let's do plus, let me just write out all the terms, plus t squared times, oh, there's three, one, three, three, one. Remember, binomial expansion. So it's going to be one times three times t squared times negative one over three. That's the next term. Plus, the next term is going to be another three, but this time this is going to be just t, and this is going to be minus one over three squared plus the last term is going to be this cubed. There'll be no this, it's just minus 1 over 3 cubed. That's the first term. And then here we know how to expand this. This is plus t squared minus 2 over 3t plus 1 over 9. And then here we have plus t minus 1 over 3 plus 1 equals 0. Okay, so I have expanded every single term here. Now, when we rewrite this 
it's going to look like this. This is going to be t cubed. Now this here will be, this 3 cancels this 3, so we have minus t squared. Here is going to be this 3, this is 1 over 9, and that's going to be 3, that's t over 3, 1 third of t, plus 1 over 3t. If we go here, this is going to be one, minus 1 over 27. If we go here, this is just plus t squared. If we go here, this is going to be minus, yeah, it's just minus 2 over 3t. Here, plus 1 over 9. Here we have plus t. So everything else is just plus t. And I can actually put these two together. That's going to be plus 2 thirds. Okay, so as you can see, the t squared term is automatically eliminated. Minus t squared plus t squared. So we have t cubed. And then all the terms that have t are 1, 2, and 3. And the numbers are, that's plus 1 over 3 minus 2 over 3 plus 1, like that, t. And then all the constants are, let's put the positive one first, let's put these two together. That's plus 1 over 9 plus 2 over 3 minus 1 over 27. Okay. We just got our depressed cubic, 20 over 27. We just got our depressed cubic. <laughs> so for Cardano's formula, this is P and this is Q. So can we solve this? Yes, we can find it. Now, I saw some comments about, oh, you can only get the real, you can't get the imaginary. Well, Cardano never knew about imaginary numbers. So his formula was meant to compute the real numbers. But as soon as you get one answer, you can get the other two. If you remember the cube root of unity, that's how you get all the other formulas. As long as what you have here are real coefficients, your, your cubic will always be just some guy that goes this way. Look, you can only cross the x-axis once. So you'll only get one answer from Cardano's formula, but you can now get the complex answers using just basic multiplication. Just multiply your answer by two different complex numbers and you get your answers. And that's if there's only one real root. But if you have more than one real root, then there's a problem because Cardano's formula is not going to give you anything real. And that's even crazier. Okay, so the reason why this formula is not popular in the classroom is because many of the answers you get, you'll have to use a computer or a calculator to generate it. So you might get the expression, but not the actual value. Even this is hard to compute. But I know this could be factored even from the beginning. You can factor this. So we already know one of the answers is x equals minus 1. Okay? So, but let's use Cardano's formula using this and see where we get to. So by Cardano's formula, we have that t will be equal to the q of minus q over 2. So it's going to be minus 20 over 27 divided by 2. That's going to be minus 10 over 27. I'm already using the formula, okay? Plus the square root of, this is going to be the same thing, q over 4 this time. So it's going to be q squared over 4, which is 400 over 27 squared. Over 4 means you multiply this by 4, okay? Plus p cubed, this, is gonna, this cubed is going to be 8 over 27, okay, divided by 27. So it's going to be 8 over 27, 8 over 27 times 27, so 27 squared. But this 4 will cancel this 4, so we have this to be 100. Now, I'm going to write the other one, which is exactly what we have here. 
It's just that there's a minus sign. So t equals the cube root of plus minus 10 over 27 plus. If you look at this, they have um, the same denominator. And if you take the square root of it, it's just going to be over 27. And 100 plus 8 is 108 with a square root. Okay, here we have the cube root also, cube root of whatever you have here, let's just write it, minus 10 over 27 plus the square root of, no, this would be minus now, minus the square root of 108 over, that's all I want to write, over 27 squared. Okay, so we're going to have minus 10 over 27 minus square root of 108 over 27. <sighs> See, clearly, based on what we have, you can pull out this 1 over 27 because we know the cube root of 1 over 27 is 1 over 3 right? The same thing here, we know the cube root to be cube root of 1 over 3. So what we have is right, 3 minus 10. Guess what the answer is? This is part of the problem where, why this is not popular. Why is it not popular? Because it's hard for anybody to know that this plus this was going to give you minus 2. That this is another way of writing minus 2 apart from the one third. So now that we've gotten t to be minus 2 over 3, we can find x. x equals, what was the substitution? t minus 1 third equals minus 2 over 3 minus 1 over 3. That's minus 3 over 3 which is minus one, which is the only real solution to this original problem. So you multiply by omega, you get one answer. Multiply by omega squared, you get another answer. And that's it. Those are the three solutions to this. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.